There's a lot of debate about open floor plans. Some people love them, while others hate them. It is easy to see the appeal as open floor plans often feel more contemporary and relaxed. and also make smarter use of light, especially in homes that only have one or two windows. But like many popular design trends, it can be overdone. Builders, designers, and developers often assume that everyone follows the same lifestyle, so they throw a blanket approach over their designs. Further, Designing an open concept home is different to traditional floor plans, as there are unobstructed views with no defined boundaries, making it tricky to decorate. In this video, I'll go through the 6 biggest mistakes people make when it comes to open plan living, and why an open plan home may not be the best choice for you. Close or traditional floor plan homes have distinct rooms that are separated with walls and doors. Open floor plans, on the other hand, combine the common areas like the living room, kitchen, and dining area all into one large space. Closed floor plans are generally seen as being more traditional, cozier, and more intimate, while open plan spaces are more casual and free-flowing. While an open plan is the preferred approach to home design these days, it is not suited to everyone, as these plans often lack privacy, become cluttered very easily, require extra thought for proper lighting installation, and can be noisy. A compromise that is quite popular nowadays is a hybrid between open and traditional floor plans, otherwise known as broken plan. This allows you to keep the thing you love about open plan, particularly the light and openness, but also lets your room retain an element of privacy. This is done through structural elements such as half walls, room dividing shelves, changing levels, walls of glass, and even mezzanine. Cradle windows, indoor windows, and glazed partitions are some of my favorites, as it allows you to see through and borrow light from another room, while giving enough separation and privacy. There are also less permanent ways to transform a currently open plan space into a broken plan, which I'll share in later parts of this video. That being said, open plan spaces are a great option for those who love to socialize and entertain, and those who lead a very busy lifestyle as you can easily multitask. If you do choose to go with an open plan space, here are some of the most common mistakes that you need to avoid. Open plan spaces that don't have clearly defined zones can feel like halls, vast, sparse, and impersonal. Not only does zoning create a sense of structure and organization in a fluid space, but it can also increase aesthetic appeal, increase functionality, and create a sense of intimacy. Broadly speaking, open plan spaces should be zoned into at least three main areas, a section for cooking, another section for dining, and one for relaxing. Within each of these areas, you need to have an anchor point to visually define the zones. You will most likely already have a kitchen island as your kitchen anchor point, and potentially a fireplace as the anchor point for the living area. Your other anchor points will be your furniture arrangements. For example, a sofa, armchair, and coffee table for the living area finish off with a rug, or dining table and chairs for the dining area. Rugs are a great way to zone an open plan space without the visual weight of furniture. It also helps ground your furniture rather than having it randomly float in space. Moving your sofa roughly into the middle of the room is another perfect way to divide up a bigger space. While each zone will delineate a different functional area, you need to make sure that the zones speak to each other to maintain a sense of visual continuity throughout the whole space. Don't overwhelm and overcomplicate an open plan space with heaps of different styles of furniture, decor, and finishes. This often happens when people move from a closed plan space to an open plan and try to fit all their old furniture into the new space. Often, each room in a closed plan has its own personality, and furniture from each distinct room doesn't always come together in one open room. Same goes with color. You can have a completely different color scheme from room to room in a closed plan. But this is not always possible in open plan spaces, as they are now one continuous space rather than separate rooms. It is best to select one dominant interior style and a color palette as a foundation for an open plan space. Start with the neutral base and then add one or two additional colors to the scheme. Assess the furniture you already own and identify what pieces work with this overarching style. Remove pieces that don't work or upcycle them so they can fit in the space. While you need to have cohesion throughout your space, you don't want to go to the extreme of making everything matchy-matchy. Select furniture and accessories that vary in color and material, but still speak to one another visually. People often fall into the trap of buying really large furniture for an open plan space. 
because they think they have plenty of room, but the furniture often ends up being oversized and negatively impacts upon the flow of the space. Before you buy your furniture, you should be making a floor plan where you specifically map out traffic flow. Think of every walking path scenario in your space. How are you going to get from the couch to the kitchen? How are you going to get from the dining table to a storage cupboard on the other side of the room? Map out all of these possibilities. All of your major thoroughfares should be roughly 3 feet wide, so you can comfortably move around. For smaller spaces, aim for at least 18 to 24 inches between large furniture pieces. If you're finding that you can't fit everything in within proper walking paths, you may need to remove furniture or consider multifunctional pieces. Many people find it challenging to light an open plan space due to the lack of walls. While open plan spaces are supposed to feel vast and airy, poor lighting often make them feel small and gloomy. You need to take lighting into account during the initial stages of the design process. Consider how you are going to incorporate overhead, ambient, task, and accent lighting into your open plan space and how you are going to use light to define zones. As an example, you may use pendant lights over your dining table to define the dining area, or floor lamp to define a reading nook. For large open plan homes, you need to make sure that you have planned your outlets everywhere you want to have furniture. For example, you may need to consider installing floor outlets so you can have floor lamps in the middle of the living room, without cords snaking all around your space. For smaller spaces, you can simply use extension cords as the spaces are typically confined by the walls. In many conventional closed plan rooms, furniture is usually pushed against the wall to optimize space. However, this isn't always the case with big open plan space as it can feel too open and disjointed. Instead, have an open-minded approach and try to organize everything to encourage conversation and interaction. Pull out your sofa to the middle of the room and place an armchair opposite it or have two sofas opposite each other if there's enough space. The only problem with having floating furniture is that you need to make sure your pieces look good from all angles. You can't hide the back of your sofa up against a wall. As we touch on at the beginning of this video, you need to have cohesion between all the delineated zones in your open plan space. The kitchen is one of these delineated zones. As the kitchen has a lot of elements that can't be changed without an expensive renovation, it is best to consider this right from the planning stage, so it speaks to the architecture of your home and the style of your living area. Make sure the colors and designs found within your bench top, splash bag, and joinery complement what you have in mind for your dining and living areas. The easiest way to do this is to repeat colors and finishes, but again, don't go overboard as you don't want your space to feel too matchy-matchy. If there's already an existing but ugly builder grades kitchen, my suggestion is to just come up with a plan on how you want your space to look. Start with the other areas and slowly update the kitchen as you go so it speaks with the rest of the space when you have the time or means. There are several ways you can transform an open plan space into a broken plan, some of which may require more planning than others. First is open shelving. This is an easy way to zone areas while maintaining sight lines across the room for an open, airy feel. It can suit both large and small spaces, with an added benefit of storage space and a surface to curate beautiful items. Plus, the shelving can also become an architectural feature on its own. If you're on a budget, you can also look into IKEA modular storage system, such as the Kallax or the Alvarli for a more permanent and built-in solution. Similarly, you can also use bespoke furniture or custom joineries as an effective way to zone a living space. Windows and glazed partitions are a more permanent way to transform an open plan into a broken plan. They look great, allows you to borrow light from another room, blocks out a good amount of noise, but can be quite expensive to get it done right. An easier and less permanent solution is to add a screen. This allows the flexibility to retain an open plan space and switch at a moment's notice. Screens are a great way to divide a room and can be used for both large or small spaces. As a bonus, you can just fold the screen and take it with you when moving. If you're considering creating an open plan space in your home or already have one, I hope these tips have helped you in your design process. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.